Hello everyone. I am Dr. Avinash. I am a periodontist and I am a reader at JSS Dental College and Hospital. In this video, we will be discussing about treatment plan in periodontics. The purpose of this video is to make an undergraduate student understand about treatment plan in periodontics. Let us understand what is treatment plan. Planning is a systematic approach in defining the problem, setting priorities, developing specific goals and objectives, and determining alternative strategies and methods of implementation. Treatment plan is a blueprint for case management. Just like when we build a house, we have blueprint which tells us when to build what and how to approach the building process. Treatment plan is a blueprint for how to approach with the treatment, which treatment to be done first and which next and what would be the probable outcome of the treatment and reassessing all this involves in a given treatment plan. Let's understand what are the goals of periodontal treatment. We can divide the goals into three parts that is immediate, intermediate and long term goals. So what do we expect in immediate goal? In immediate goals, we try to eliminate all infectious and inflammatory processes that cause periodontal and other oral problems that may hinder patient's general health. This involves educating the patient and referring the patient to other specialist if required. It may be a physician or a dental specialist. Example, reduction in gingival inflammation, extraction of hopeless teeth, reduction in pocket, restoration of carious tooth, etc. These are the immediate goals which we would want to achieve. Then comes the intermediate goal. In intermediate goals, we tend to reconstruct healthy dentition by fulfilling the functional and aesthetic requirements. This is done by restoring the health, endodontic treatment if required, orthodontic treatment, periodontal treatment and any other aesthetic treatment. The long term goals would include maintenance of patient's health by prevention and professional supportive therapy. Here both patient and clinician has to work together. Maintenance of oral hygiene becomes very important to achieve long-term goals and also patient has to adhere to recall protocols and visit their dentist regularly. Moving ahead, the aim of the treatment plan is total treatment that is coordination of all the immediate, intermediate and long-term goals for the purpose of creating well-functioning dentition in a healthy periodontal environment. Before going ahead with the phases of treatment, let us try to solve the dilemma whether to extract the tooth or not to extract the tooth. If the teeth has hopeless prognosis and it can't be saved, then we have to extract the teeth. But the question here is whether we should extract immediately or whether should we should wait for extraction to be done at a later date. So now let's see when to extract the teeth immediately. It has to be extracted immediately if it is mobile and it impairs the function. That is, if the patient is finding difficulty and if the teeth hurts while chewing the foot, then the tooth has to be extracted immediately. Also, if there are any acute abscesses and the tooth cannot be saved, then it has to be extracted immediately. And if the tooth is of no use in the overall treatment plan, it has to be extracted. Some teeth can be treated temporarily. With the predictable use of implants, decision should be carefully taken on teeth which has questionable prognosis whether to extract it immediately or whether to wait. So these are the conditions where we can wait for extraction. If the tooth maintains the posterior stops 
and may be functional after implant placement in adjacent areas. In that case, we don't extract it immediately, but we extract it at a later date when the implant processes is complete. In anterior aesthetic zone, we can delay the extraction and the extraction can be performed at the time of periodontal surgery. Now let's get into the phases of treatment. There are five phases of treatment. Preliminary phase, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase 4. So let's take it up one by one. So we'll start with preliminary phase. Preliminary phase is also known as emergency phase. Here the emergency may be due to dental or periapical, it may be periodontal emergency or any other emergency like trauma. In this phase, we also extract the hopeless teeth. Moving on to the next phase, that is phase 1 therapy, which is also called as non-surgical phase or etiotrophic phase, meaning that we treat the etiology of the condition. So in this phase, these are the treatments which can be performed. It is plaque control and patient education which includes teaching the brushing technique and performing scaling and root planing. Diet control in case of the patient is having rampant caries, then we need to counsel the patient to have appropriate diet. Removal of calculus and root planing. Correlation of restorative and prosthetic irritational factors that is if there are any overhanging restoration or if the process is, is impinging on the gingiva or any other tissues that has to be corrected excavation of the caries and restoration it can be temporary restoration or permanent depending on whether a definitive prognosis has been determined if the decay is initial we can go ahead and do the permanent restoration Whereas, if the decay is very deep and it is very close to the pulp, then we may have to do temporary restoration and wait for the tooth to respond. Moving ahead, all the antimicrobial therapy, whether it is local or systemic, comes under phase 1 therapy. Any occlusal corrections like coronoplasty or selective grinding should be done under phase 1 therapy. Minor orthodontic tooth movement and provisional splinting and processes are part of phase 1 therapy. Once we are done with phase 1 therapy, we immediately would not go to the next phase. We would re-evaluate the response to phase 1 therapy. Here we need to periodically recall the patient and recheck for pocket depth and gingival inflammation lark, calculus and caries if any and also we need to re-educate the patient if the patient's maintenance is not good and all the treatment what you have done in phase 1 therapy has to be re-evaluated and see for the improvement and if we feel there is requirement of next phases of treatment then we will go ahead and perform the next phase the next phase would be phase 2 therapy which is also known as surgical phase. Here we perform periodontal surgeries, implant surgeries and also endodontic treatment. In phase 3 therapy which is also known as restorative phase, we perform final restorations. In case if you have done temporary restoration in phase 1 therapy, now in phase 3 therapy we will be doing permanent restoration or final restoration. Fixed and removable prosthodontic appliances can be done in this phase and evaluation of response to restorative procedures also need to be done in this phase. Also, periodontal re-examination can be done in this phase to evaluate the outcome of the procedures which were done in previous phases. Moving on to the next phase, that is phase 4 therapy which is also known as maintenance phase. In this phase, periodic rechecking and re-evaluating 
for plaque and calculus should be done and also examine the gingival and periodontal condition. Let us look for gingival inflammation and any pockets are present and also for periodontal pockets. Occlusion and tooth mobility should be checked. We need to check whether there are any trauma from occlusion and also any other pathological changes to be recorded at this phase. Treatment sequence Though the numbers phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase 4 are given, the ideal sequence of treatment is start with emergency phase if it is required. If emergency phase is not required, we will start with phase 1 therapy that is etiotrophic phase. Once the phase 1 therapy is done, we will re-evaluate which would be a part of phase 4 therapy. Once we re-evaluate and assess the suitability of the patient for further treatment, we would go ahead and perform phase 2 therapy if the patient is indicated for phase 2 therapy. Phase 2 therapy is also called as surgical phase. Here we perform all the surgeries which the patient requires. And once the surgical phase is complete, we will go back to phase 4 therapy and re-evaluate the patient's condition and then pass on to phase 3 therapy if it is required. If the patient doesn't require any phase 3 therapy, we will end the treatment at phase 4 therapy. There is also an arrow mark extending from phase 2 therapy to phase 3 therapy directly. This is because well, at times we may perform phase 2 therapy and phase 3 therapy together or within a short space of time. Once all the treatment has been done, it is important to have a clear recall protocol for the patient. Marin has given a very good classification when do we recall the patient based on their condition. Patients have been classified into three classes that is class A, class B and class C. Let's go ahead and understand what is this. Class A are the patients who have excellent results for the treatment and they have maintained very well for one year or more. That means they have brushed their teeth properly and they have not missed any recall protocol and their condition, oral condition is excellent now. These patients can be recalled every six months or one year. Then we have class B patients. The treatment outcome here is generally good, but they have some inconsistencies in maintaining their oral hygiene. They are either medically compromised or they have some other challenges in maintaining their oral hygiene. These patients can be recalled every 3 to 4 months. Then we have class C patients who have not been following the oral hygiene instructions properly and their oral hygiene is very poor. They are immunocompromised or they have some systemic conditions which are not under control. For example, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus or patients suffering with AIDS or any other immunocompromised condition. They have complex processes in their oral cavity which makes them difficult to maintain their oral hygiene. And also some systemic conditions which can affect periodontium needs to be considered as class C patients. These patients re need recall quite often and we may have to recall them as frequently as one month or three months. Once we are ready with the treatment plan, we need to inform the patient clearly about the treatment, clearly about the condition what they have and what treatment is required. But also we need to discuss about the prognosis of the treatment. We should not be vague in explaining the treatment and we should be very clear in explaining the treatment plan to the patient. To conclude, the ultimate goal for every patient is to bring his or her mouth to a state of health and maintain it for long. 
This begins with educating the patient on the problems in his or her mouth and the etiologies, treatment, treatment options and prevention of these problems. A properly formulated treatment plan is paramount to achieving this goal. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any doubts, kindly post it in the comment section. Thanks for watching.